I recently posted a video going through my observatory, a, a basic tour of all the equipment within the observatory itself, but I ran through the astrophotography rig really quickly. Uh, I thought I'd take some time to go through it in a little bit more detail and outline the equipment that I have to take the images that I do. So let's get started. So the first thing to go through is the mount. This is a Software Bisque Paramount MX Plus, which is middle of the range for Software Bisque. They make three mounts essentially, the uh, Paramount Mighty, and the Paramount MX Plus, and the Paramount ME. This is uh, the middle of the range. It carries about 45 kilos or 100 pounds. Uh, it, ha it doesn't have any absolute encoders or anything like that. It uh, has three can of weights. I've got an extra can of weight uh, for, to carry the load that I'm going to be putting on it and also an extension bar to the can weight bar. It's been a really good quality mount. Its pointing accuracy is unbelievable and its tracking is really great. Although I have had a couple of issues that I had to get sorted out. I had to replace the worm block uh, and the motherboard which is basically the main components of the mount, but after I've done that, it's been running really flawlessly. The OTA itself, the Optical Tube Assembly, is a AG Optical Systems IDK 14.5, so it's an imaging Dow Kirkham or a corrected Dow Kirkham, so many people are producing uh, telescopes that are this design now. It has a, a elliptical primary mirror and a a spherical secondary mirror, which apparently is relatively easy to collimate, still does have some tricky uh, challenges when, when collimating. It is a f6.7, so a reasonably fast telescope, which is, is really good. It has a focal length of around about 100 inches, just a little bit less than 100 inches, so it's quite a long focal length telescope. Uh, this telescope has been performing uh, flawlessly. It's, it's a really fantastic telescope, probably the best piece of kit in my whole gear. I got a couple of additional extras in this, including the light shroud, which was not in my previous video, but now I've put it on, uh, just to stop some of the dust from landing on the uh, the primary, and also it stops the, the light coming in from, from outside. I also got the thermal control system. Uh, this is an absolute must-have for, for any telescope, uh, especially if you're going to be operating it remotely. So this monitors the ambient temperature, the temperature of the primary mirror and the temperature of the secondary mirror and can make corrections. So it has some fans at the back here and it also has a dew heater in the primary and secondary. So the thermal control system will monitor those temperatures and see if it's too hot then it'll put the fans on, if it's too cold and dew is at risk of forming then it will turn the heaters on. So generally at the start of an imaging session you'll need to have the fans running just to cool the primary mirror down to, to ambient and then throughout the night uh, the fans or the dew heater will, will click on depending on what temperature the primary and secondary are at. But this system operates really well. It can maintain tolerance of about 0.1 or 0.2 degrees the secondary mirror does tend to uh, heat up quite quickly and then cool down quite quickly, so you need to monitor how long you're pulsating the heat for, but you can get this system working really well. The whole system is uh, it's a carbon fibre truss system. Uh, the light comes in here and bounces off the primary mirror into the secondary mirror and goes through two corrected lenses right in the middle uh, in the train here. That's what makes the corrected Dow Kirkham or imaging Dow Kirkham so it makes the field completely flat so there's no astigmatisms or, or field curvature and then the light path goes out to the, the camera. The focuser I have is the Optech Gemini rotating focuser. This has got a three inch aperture so it can take pretty much any imaging camera that, uh, that's on the, uh, on the market at the moment. It's not only a focuser, but it's also a rotator. For me, I'm using a really long focal length with a pretty small chip, so I need to make sure that I can rotate my field of view so I can frame my shots or perhaps even find a guide star. So this allows me to do it in one complete package. 
the focusing travel is really minimal, it only moves a couple of centimetres, so you need to make sure that the position of your camera is bang on the middle of the focal position, so any changes to the focus uh, due to changes in temperature of the primary mirror or different filters only requires you to move it slightly, so that's well within the travel of the, the focuser. It, this focuser is highly accurate, I haven't had any problems with this either, it's uh, been a fantastic uh, focuser, and it's one of the, probably the best focuser out there on the market that I, I can see. So if you have a look at the other side, I'll, I'll rotate the telescope around. So this is the system that controls the focuser and the rotator. It also has a temperature sensor, so it's a thermal control uh, tel uh, focuser. So it can sense changes in the ambient temperature and make corrections to the focus position accordingly uh, to accommodate for any changes in the focus position of the primary mirror. So it's a really high-end piece of equipment and it's been working fantastically. The guiding system I'm using is a MMOAG, or an off-axis guider. This is by Astrodon, and a Lodestar X2 auto guider. A off-axis guider takes a portion of the light that goes through the main optical tube assembly and splits it off into the guide camera. Now, guide cameras tend to have a really small chip size, so the field of view at this focal length is really small, so the chances of finding a really decent star is minimal, so you need to make sure that you've got a really sensitive guide camera. The Lodestar X2 is quite sensitive and I haven't had too many problems. It does help to have a rotator as well, so if you need to find a better guide star you can rotate uh, the, the auto guider into a better position. But generally this has been fine to, uh, to work with the system that I've got. The camera this is not your normal camera in terms of a DSLR. If you're familiar with DSLRs, you can't actually take a photo from the camera itself or, or view any of the images. It can only be run through the, the uh, computer. Uh, it's a Finger Lakes Instrumentations FLI Microline 8300. It's a mono camera, so it only takes pictures in black and white and uh, it cools down to about negative uh, 50 or 60 degrees centigrade from the ambient temperature. It is connected to a filter wheel and uh, the filter wheel has is a CF25, CFW25, so Finger Lakes uh, CFW25. It has five filters in it which are two inches each. Uh, I've gotten here the a luminance filter which is essentially a clear filter that blocks out some of the infrared, a red, green and blue to make up your normal colour filters and then some narrowband filters, hydrogen alpha, uh, sulphur 2 and oxygen 3. So all the filters that I have are within this filter wheel. So the chip in the camera is a KAF8300 chip, so this is a, a popular chip that gets used in a number of different cameras. It's a 8.3 megapixel with 5.4 micron size pixels. Uh, it's, it's really reasonably good. It's got a pretty good read noise. It's probably a little bit small for the focal length that I'm, that I'm taking images at. So the field of view I, I get is, is quite small. But it's manageable at the moment. I only really want to take pictures. I'm looking to take pictures of, of galaxies and uh, distant clusters and things like that and some nebulas, but for what I want to use, uh, use it for, it's been, you know, been quite good. So that's all the equipment in my setup. I hope you found it interesting. I thought I'd leave you now with a look at some of the pictures I've taken with that setup.